Hello, biology students. Today we're going to be talking about the odd kingdom, Protista, the one that we usually forget about, but it's really important that we keep track of what it is because students really struggle with this on the SOL and the biology final exam. All right, let's jump in. What is this kingdom all about? Well, it's really important to remember that these guys are eukaryotic. What does that mean? Do they have a nucleus or do they not? They definitely do if they're eukaryotic. And what's really cool is that they're just so diverse. There's a greater range of sizes and structures than most of the other kingdoms because there's just so many of them. They're kind of this weird category where we have such a cool mixture of sizes and shapes. And um, because of that, there are lots of different types of things. Some of them are heterotrophs, some of them are autotrophs. Don't forget what those two things mean. Heterotroph means that it's eating other things. Autotroph means that it's making its own food. Um, do know that some of them are unicellular. Almost most of the ones we'll look at are, and some of them are multicellular. Because a lot of them are unicellular, students accidentally get them confused with prokaryotes or bacteria, especially since this word sounds a lot like prokaryote. But what's really different about them compared to prokaryotes? Well, first of all, they're eukaryotes, meaning they have a nucleus. So if there's a nucleus and it's single-celled, don't think it's a bacteria. I would lean towards protists. What are some other cool things? They can reproduce sexually or asexually. And they could be kind of animal-like, kind of plant-like, and kind of fungus-like. So we're going to be kind of learning about all those cool differences. So first, let's jump into how they move, and it'll help us review some of our organelles. A lot of their movement can be through these short hair-like projections. Some of them can be through long whip-like projections. And some of them can be through things that are like projections or fake feet that are coming out of the cytoplasm and those organisms are really cool because they're constantly changing shape and look like the blob so this one is a paramecium and you could draw this as an example for which of those types of things well if we look carefully on the diagram we'll see that it says cilia and cilia again are those tiny little hairs all right so paramecium is a really great example for the type of organism with cilia and I might draw an example of a circle with the tiny hair like projections flagella on the other hand look very much longer and this is a euglena single celled and euglena is really cool because it actually is an autotroph and it will do some photosynthesis which is why it's usually drawn green but this tiny whip like projection will move this euglena in a very similar fashion to how a sperm moves with a flagella. Last but not least we have our pseudopods which is sometimes referred to as fake foot. Again remember that that projection of the cytoplasm to pull and move the organism. Pretty interesting ways to move. So again, there can be asexual reproduction for protists, that's splitting into two identical clone cells. That process is called binary fission, which looks a lot like mitosis. And then it's also sexual reproduction, where these organisms would produce and then fuse their haploid gametes, and that one is the one that would be able to increase genetic diversity because it's not clones. Remember we said that protists are very cool and they have lots of different characteristics, some that are animal-like, some that are plant-like, and some that are fungi-like? Well, let's first talk about the animal-like ones, all right? Since it's animal-like, that means it's acting heterotrophic, meaning it's consuming other organisms. So we have a couple different examples here that you don't need to draw, but you might want to write down. So this is a blood parasite. It's heterotrophic. Think like ticks or animals, and they are parasites that take in blood. Um, and then we have this freshwater ciliate organism. It has these cilia, those tiny hairs, and that pull, uses those hairs to pull in organisms to eat, kind of like how we eat with our mouths. And then there's paramecium that will eat through this oral opening that's kind of like a mouth and they live in the freshwater too so all of these creatures they eat just like humans and they're also heterotrophs they consume things there are other protists that are plant-like plants are not heterotrophs they are autotrophic meaning they do photosynthesis those protists are going to have chloroplasts remember they can have organelles they are 
eukaryotes, and in their chloroplasts, they'll have chlorophyll to trap the sunlight energy. Some of these things are like this guy, Volvox, and we can see that they're very green, and that shows that they have the chlorophyll underneath the microscope. Diatoms, this picture that doesn't show the green because they're so small, but they definitely are photosynthetic, and they're in the ocean, and they are so vast that we rely on these guys, especially the diatoms, for most of our oxygen on the planet. Then we have our friend, the Euglena, that we saw that has a long whipping flagella. That's freshwater and it's unicellular. And it was our example of something with a flagella. And then even our green algae. Algae is considered to be, um, and like seaweed is considered to be a multicellular autotrophic protist. All right, because it's not quite a plant, right? It's kind of prehistoric and considered a protist. Very interesting. And so related to that, this, this giant category of plankton, and we're really going to focus in on that for a moment because a lot of our world relies on plankton for many reasons. They are the small floating microscopic organisms in the freshwater marine environments and plankton is a big category it can really include phytoplankton and zooplankton which one of those do you think is more plant-like the phytoplankton sounds like the word um, photosynthesis and zooplankton sounds like zoo or animals that one's more animal-like and so the animal-like one is heterotrophic, and the phytoplankton one is autotrophic. And we rely on these guys to be the base of the food chains for the marine organisms, where especially the phytoplankton are going to act like the plants in the marine food chain. And then they get eaten by these guys who are also small, but they're heterotrophic. And then those guys can get eaten by bigger things, such as whales or small fish, etc. So we really rely on these for the food chain and also, especially for our phytoplankton producing our oxygen across the globe. One of our last couple of things is we also have fungi-like protists. We're considering the ones that are acting very decomposer-like in their heterotrophic category as very fungi-like since fungi are decomposers. And when we say decomposer, we mean that they're absorbing nutrients from dead or decaying matter and they're breaking it down. We think about that as like mold that's growing on things that are gross in our fridge or like really slimy mold that we see outside. All of those things are um, protists. They're like weird protists that aren't quite fungi, but they're kind of acting like fungi. And the reason why we don't call them fungi is because fungi are multicellular and they have a couple other characteristics that we'll learn about in our fungi podcast that they need to have to be considered actually fungi rather than protists. Wonderful job guys. Make sure you go back and see the major examples and the major categories of protists and you'll be off to a good start. Woo!